joining us for the Medical Alley Association series, Leadership Through a Crisis. Joining us today is Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota President and CEO, Craig Samet, to talk to us about leading his company, the largest insurer of Minnesotans through COVID-19 and the personal challenges he faced. Craig, thank you for joining us. Let's dive right in. Talk to me a little bit about when the gravity of the situation hit you. It started off as this virus that we'd occasionally hear about on the news. When did that really start to hit home for you and how did you respond? You know, I think that I learned earlier in my career that uh, healthy paranoia is um, a good trait for leadership to have. And I think in, in February, uh, when we began to hear about the COVID pandemic, um, we began to worry about the potential impact on our community, on our organization. Um, the, I think the first thing that came to mind uh, for me and frankly for our whole leadership team was the health, safety, and security of our teammates, as well as the assurance that the people we served uh, had good access to care and financial support. Our, our very strong instinct was now was not the time that either our members or our teammates should worry about coverage or costs or safety or service. So did your role have to change and how quickly did you have to adapt to that new role? I think, I think all of our roles changed um, as soon as we faced something that, you know, we haven't faced in over a hundred years. Blue Cross has been around for over 85, but uh, we've never been through this before. This is new for all of us. But I'd say that, you know, I've, I've certainly recognized that I've needed to lead differently. I'm, I'm no longer just a chief executive officer. I feel like I'm, uh, a chief communications officer now. I'm a chief listening officer. I'm a chief empathy officer. I'm a chief appreciation officer. And uh, in many respects, I need to be a chief vulnerability officer. We're, we're facing unprecedented and scary uh, and challenging times. And the playbook or the approaches that we've used to lead in different times uh, no longer applies. I think that our responsibilities and our very character have needed to change. You mentioned being the largest insurer of Minnesotans. Did that present unique challenges no one else had to face? Well, I think the challenge as being the largest insurer in Minnesota is really an overwhelming sense of protection and responsibility. You know, the, the value of insurance companies are to be here in the good or the bad. Um, and the whole notion of insurance is when, um, when we face a crisis and when healthcare costs go up, um, we're there to assure that um, costs are covered. And uh, when our community is healthy and when we find that uh, costs are lower, um, then is the time, that is the time that we um, we still assure that our members and our patients are getting wonderful care, but we also um, create a rainy day fund uh, to support our community when things get rough. So, so I think that the, um, the overwhelming sense of responsibility and our desire to be a very stable organization at a time where everything is changing around us uh, has been one of the most important things that um, we have focused on in this crisis. That's a big weight to have on one's shoulders. How do you personally deal with it? Do you dive into work and work harder? Are you one of those people that waits for the golf course to open to go blow off some steam? Uh, let us into the head of Craig Samet a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm a terrible golfer, <laughs> so I have not been waiting for the golf courses to open. I have not golfed. Um, I. I do uh, tend to uh, go deeper into work when, uh, when things get tough. And, and so I, I have been often been reminded by our team when I focused on the health and safety and sanity of our team, 
that I take some of my own medicine, so to speak, or, or follow my own advice. I haven't done that very well. Uh, there's a tendency that uh, when we're working remotely, as many of us are, that we sit at our desk at five in the morning and we're still there at 10 at night. And so I have very much dealt with stress by uh, working harder. Uh, and um, I, I certainly need to temper that. I think a lot of us are dealing with that right now. We are working from home, so you don't ever actually get to leave the office. Well, I think it's been a challenge for all of us. Um, you know, in many respects, we've all experienced a moment of grieving when we look back at what life was like just a few months ago. Um, and, and I think it's also very anxiety provoking as we look ahead to what life may be um, with the recognition that the way we work and the way we live will likely change. And so I think the uncertainty of exactly how things will be different in the future has affected every single one of us. And, and it's been hard. Absolutely, it has been. You mentioned Blue Cross is 85 years old, but the last time we dealt with something like this was over 100 years ago. How has your organization changed due to the pandemic? Yeah, well, I, I think we, um, we've been a bit ahead of the curve, fortunately. Uh, I, have, I have long believed that our industry can be better mm -hmm. and that there are parts of health insurance and care delivery and coverage and financing and service that um, uh, don't quite match the levels that we would expect of other industries. And so even before COVID, our focus was very much on thinking about how we could reinvent our industry. Um, my, I think the biggest opportunity from this crisis is that we see a silver lining and that we don't ignore what we can see as gaps in healthcare. Um, we can see that we should have moved to telehealth a whole lot sooner. We, can see that um, health systems are, are, are so dependent upon the volume of services that when volumes drop, for whatever reason volumes may drop and volumes could equally drop because a community gets healthy, that systems suffer. So there's an opportunity to think about payment differently. So I, I think the biggest opportunity is that we should see the challenges in our industry and act on them to fix them. I'd, I'd say that my biggest fear is that we go back to the way things were, that we ignore the red flags and that we don't realize that service can be better, coordination can be better, quality can be better, and affordability can be better in healthcare and that we should take those opportunities, this opportunity to act on those. Uh, we've been calling this our day after tomorrow strategy. when. Um, um, when we come back to work um, and when we, when we work through a new normal in the near term, we think of that as our tomorrow strategy. But the day after tomorrow, um, we want to just get better as an industry. And I think our organization has been putting a lot of thought into that. So from your perspective as a key leader in this industry, how do we prevent things from going back to the way they were? Well, I think that that same question about how do we prevent us from going back really applies to both crises we find ourselves in, both a, a medical crisis as well as a social crisis. Um, and I think that the answer to that requires that we, we truly listen, we truly understand, and then we truly act on the things that have weakened our community and weakened our industry. Um, well, frankly, I think it takes um, bravery, it takes collaboration, it takes action, not just words, and it takes innovation. And I, I hope that our industry in particular, um, but our community more generally, uh, is thinking the same way and that we we take very bold moves in the coming months and years. So you're a leader of not only one of the biggest companies in Medical Alley, but you also step up to the plate to serve in a leadership role on the Medical Alley Association's board of directors. 
And in doing so, this gives you a unique perspective into what the entire Medical Alley community has been up to during COVID-19. Can you talk to me a little bit about your observations about how this community responded when crisis hit? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's said that a strong leadership shines in a crisis. And I couldn't be prouder uh, to be in Minnesota uh, during this time, uh, certainly because of the exceptionally talented folks we've got here at Blue Cross. But more broadly than that, I've seen leadership shine across the state. I, I don't think there is a better example of an organization that has really rallied, collaborated, um, focused on protecting the vulnerable, the vulnerable being providers that have needed PPE or members that have needed uh, care and services that go beyond just clinical ones and move to social ones. I feel that Minnesota has truly stepped up, uh, in particular the organizations in Medical Alley, and I'm very proud of that. And lastly, what is one of the greatest challenges you personally had to deal with as a leader during this time? How did you overcome it? And how does that change your thoughts on leadership or your own leadership style moving forward? I would say, I mean, I think that the challenges we've all faced have been real. Um, we, have, we have been facing heartbreaking and painful um, intertwining crises. Um, and a personal challenge is, is that I, um, I lost a parent uh, in the midst of the crisis as well. So I think that what I've had to face um, and the leadership strength that frankly has been most important for me right now is, is resilience um, and uh, uh, tenacity um, that, that despite uh, all that we've been through, there are many in our community that are suffering worse. Um, and uh, as they say, when you're knocked down seven times, uh, stand up eight. I think that's uh, the philosophy that I've brought to my work over the last several months and that I've seen in many of our teammates at Blue Cross as well. Thank you again for joining us for the Medical Alley Association series, Leadership Through Crisis. To listen to more episodes or find out when they're coming, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter at medicalalley.org.